。啊、哦，我觉得 A H Q 是一个很强的对手。我觉得我们下路的实力是绝对要强于他们的。我觉得只要我们下路正常发挥，我觉得可以赢。Death sends from across the wall into the jump is Nadius not going anywhere and Death is gonna pick up another one. 我觉得安能打败 Death， 他是我队友，所以我相信他。It's another beautiful kill, but triple for Anne, and the Urgot is making plays. 呃，我们会打败 EDG 在市场里面。Welcome back, everyone, to the 2015 Mid-Season Invitational. We are one series down and just minutes away from game one of our second semifinal between the LPL's Edward Gaming and the LMS's AHQ Esports Club. But first, we wanted to click over to Twitter and see how you guys are sharing this week's event. At Jacob Kilroy, one is hitting the books while learning a thing or two from Fakers Ezreal. I promise that's going to come up in just a second so that we can see it. Oh, well, ah, there it is. <laughs> there it is. Study time while watching League of Legends. What could be better than that? And at Red Alex is experiencing MSI Inception <laughs> here at Florida State University. Sweet seats. I mean, you got to take in Twitch chat, right? I, I feel like that's the only reason you open the stream while sitting at the actual event. We'll keep those great snapshots coming our way. We're at Lolly Sports, and remember, remember to use the hashtag MSI2015. Now, last week, we got our first glimpse of the new Samsung White Championship skins, and among them is everyone's favorite pride stocking jungler, Rengar. Rengar is a good He's starting oh. to loop around. Here he comes. He's in stealth. There's the alert. They know he's there, but they don't know who he's on. He eats Uzi right away. Samsung White, the 2014 World Champion. Now, Dandy, along with all of our 2014 World Championship skins, will be available starting May 14th. Also, check out our other legacy esports skins featuring Fnatic, the Taipei Assassins, and SKT in the store now through June 1st. But now it's time to turn our attention back to the games with our second semifinal between Edward Gaming and AHQ Esports Club. We've said EDG was one of the most aggressive teams, and they've been proving it this week, even grabbing the fastest win at the event in just 22 minutes and 30 seconds. Yeah, they've reverted to their old style. Oh, the aggressive EDG is back and they're doing it with some strange picks. Not only are they picking up the likes of Gragas and Rek'Sai, but the Callista and Azir are coming through. And I don't think anyone expected that because honestly, Def's Azir did not look that fantastic coming through. Uh, Callista, sorry, didn't look fantastic coming through in the LPL, but he's pulled it out. He's playing it to an absolutely massive KDA and he just does so much damage for his team. I want to shed some light on the misconception about EDG that Pawn is the main carry. He is not. He is in the first 15 minutes being a part of 21% of the kills. That is the lowest number out of all the mid laners in this tournament. And because all the games are fast paced, this statistic is extremely relevant. All the gold is funneled into Clear Love, Death, and Koro. They are really the carries. Pawn is more like a distraction, so sending resources to the mid lane is really just wasting your time because in the end, he's not the one that's going to be carrying EDG. It's going to be Death and the top laner. All right, well, meanwhile, AHQ is the team that never says die. We mentioned it earlier. They were fourth in their region, but have been a force to be reckoned with here at MSI. Yeah, and I was actually really impressed because we were, I was personally not looking so much at AHQ because they came in as an underdog and everybody actually expected them to go out in the first round, but they really impressed me and especially Ziv doing really, really great in the top lane, playing a really strong game against Marin Snar. I can just repeat that over and over. I really was impressed by the Maokai play. And I think that, if anything, he will have a really hard time against Koro Snar because that is a notch even better. So I think we should look out for his 1v1 especially. Yeah, there's another matchup I want to touch on. It's that jungle matchup because Mountain right now He's been coming out hot. This guy came up on the team in 5.5, and they just had a stellar run with them through the, just the playoffs. And now he's here. He's a big part of why they're here. And he's also got the highest kill participation pre-15 minutes of all junglers in the tournament. He's making moves on the map, and they are paying off big for his team. A huge facilitator. Problem, though, he's untested on anything other than Rek'Sai, the 100% pick ban monster. His Jarvan was underwhelming. And if that gets banned, and we saw it highly contested in that last series, I don't know what he's going to fall back on. 
But of course, you got to jump over to the other side here too, because he's up against a monster. He's up against Clear Love in the jungle for EDG. Clear Love has a career that could be considered one of the best in all of League of Legends in terms of success. He has the highest KDA in the tournament. That's not just junglers, that's everybody in the tournament. He's an absolute beast and he is another carry alongside Deft and Koro. So this is a three threat team here with Pawn being the distraction. And this is nothing new. Clear Love's done it all season long. This is not like 16% doesn't even blow me out of the water here in such a concentrated size. He he did the whole of the LPL season, the longest season in the world with a 10 KDA. Yeah, and his rec side KDA was like 48 coming into this tournament after like four or five games. He's just a monster in that jungle. Cool thing about this matchup is that we know AHQ has been relentless in the early game. In fact, four out of the five games, they have gotten the first blood and the first tower but they have struggled with closing out the early leads, particularly to poor vision denial and lackluster vision control. But EDG, we know it's a team that can go late really well, but in, they've won the fastest. That means that they can also switch gears and play the same game that AHQ can. All right, well, before we hand it off to our casters, we got to go around the horn here and do our predictions. Spawn, you're up first. Yeah, EDG for me in this one. I think that EDG just have so many tools to win this series. I think if AHQ can really play it on their terms, they still don't win. EDG beats them, so I'm all in on that one. <laughs> I think that's a really, you know, Keeping me also on EDG's side, so I will go for EDG as well. I'm going to go with AHQ for this one, actually. You know, when, I, when they ask Wester, how do you think we're going to win, he just says with the coldest stare, we'll beat him in four games. Like, this guy is the kind of guy that says, I, did I stutter? That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> I think AHQ can do this. Uh, AHQ did give SKT a run for their money, but I do have to go with EDG here. I think pound for pound across the lanes, they just stack up a little bit better. AHQ is the underdog, though, and they have been coming out of this tournament hot. They're a lot better than people expected. Well, let's see how that compares to the fan votes on LawLeesports.com, where 76% say that Edward Gaming are going to take this series. This is an, up, uh, an uphill battle for AHQ, but it has been this whole way through, in, at least in our minds, and they've proven us wrong so far. We'll see if they can do it again as we toss it over to our casters to take us into the game. We'll hear from a player that has climbed to the top of the challenger ladder in three different regions around the world and is still looking to go higher. Then,然后毕业竞赛半年,那时候蛮失落的。很多选手黄金期就在那半年。那半年我就也没有,也没有继续比赛,就在往他开始控。那,然后那段时间在维持台服第一八个月之后,也挑战了美服,然后在美服打
小会战他都抠得蛮不错的，对。西门，我觉得他比较算比较刺客型的选手，我觉得他在分推上做得特别好，就是他比较擅长一打一，一打一就是在分推上面，然后可以给对方比较大的压力。他其实是一个蛮蛮不错的选手，对，而且我觉得老天爷真的赏他这一口饭吃，就是希望他能够。越打越好，然后变成世界第一中路。靠 H Kobe 的话，我会我会打到我打到不能打为止。我如果打的表现很烂，我不会让我的粉丝看到我表现烂的一面，我会自己退出。我觉得你有梦想呢，就不要怕任何阻碍，去追寻，不放手，直到梦想到手。And what a way for Westor to double down in this match. Not only does he get to face EDG, but he gets to face one of the guys that also knocked him out at Worlds. I guess two in Pawn and Def, so it's yeah. going to be great for him. Hello, everyone. I am Rivington Biz in the third, and sharing the caster booth with me for our final semi-final showdown is David Freak Turley and Martin Deficio Lunga. Gentlemen, Martin, I know you were getting a little teary-eyed there. You used to watch Westor's stream back in the day. <laughs> I did. Long time ago, I used to watch him when he was ranked one in NA and then ranked two in Korea. Of course, what a fantastic player. He's showing here in this tournament as well the fist performance from time to time. Yeah. If he can handle himself in the mid lane, AHQ has a chance to win. Well, let's see. We're going to get right into it. Let's check out the starting lineups. On the blue side, it is Edward Gaming. That means it's Koro in the top lane, Clear Love in the jungle, Pawn in mid, Deft at AD carry, and Mako at support. And meanwhile, on the red side for game one is AHQ Esports Club, Ziv in the top lane, Mountain in the jungle, West Door in mid, Anna AD carry, and Albus on support. This is going to be an amazing matchup. A lot of people feel that ADG is kind of a raised up AHQ in a few levels in the lanes and whatnot. But like you said, if Westor can get going, if he's not fully banned out, yeah. then this is going to be good for HQ. The thing about HQ here, and, and if you look at them play back in the LMS and now here at MSI, it's so much about Westor and Mountain in terms of the early pressure they can apply. Mm -hmm. That then leads into ganking the bottom lane.